Hello, I'm Will. I'm here with Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And today we're bringing you issue 54 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest, which comes with a model of Typhus, the Herald of Nurgle, our first named character. And as ever, if you'd like to skip ahead to the battle report and see Typhus in action, you can do so. There's a time code in the description below. It will take you there. But having a look inside the issue, we also got the background of Typhus himself. He was once the well, he's the Lord of the First Company of the Death Guard and host of the Destroyer Hive. And he's been active for a good ten thousand years as attacking the Imperium. He was once known as Kalas Typhon, and he was the first company of the Death Guard Legion in the days of the Horus Heresy. And there's also some stuff about his ship, the Terminus Est, which is uh, used to be a glorious Imperial warship, but now as you can see in the artwork is all nurgleified and disgusting. Oh, there it is, there's a picture of it as it used to be. Then more Chronicles of Blood, which is the Blood Angels, Battles of the Blood Angels throughout the time of the Imperium. Then we're on to our build guide for Typhus, who comes, as you can see, on two sprues with many parts. Um, relatively straightforward to put together, but there's only one pose again, as usual, with a lot of these characters. Uh, I would actually keep all the flies and stuff on the back of him while you're, so that he's much easier to paint. You can paint all the flies and stuff on the sprue, and you can paint his back much easier. And he actually looks pretty good even without them, so you could actually leave them off entirely, but mm. I put them on. And then his painting guide, which is just a standard, standard Nurgle one, but he's got pretty much I think, every texture on the Death Guard model so far is somewhere on him. All sorts of different colours here, as you can see. Greys and browns and gold, silver, red. And he ends up looking something like this when he's finished. So then obviously he's going to feature heavily in our game, so we'll head into that straight away. So here we go for our mission for this issue. Typhus has arrived on Corvon 2 and is creating large swarms of poxwalkers that have been empowered by his destroyer hive. And the Space Marines have sent a small force to try and take him out before the poxwalkers overwhelm them. So as we hear, seek the destroyer, our mission for this issue. So here we have our deployment zones. The Space Marines start down here in the bottom left in the city area and the Death Guard deploy around the Hematrope reactor in the top right of the Mechanicus area. Need to remember that Typhus and the Tainty Cohort cannot deploy using the Teleport Strike ability in this mission, so they have to be deployed at the start of deployment. And you can see here the Death Guard deploys their units first, and the Space Marine player deploys their units, and the player gets the Space Marine player gets to go first. And there's only one objective for this mission: if the Space Marine player wins, if Typhus is eliminated, and the Death Guard player wins if Typhus survives. And the game lasts five battle rounds, and we have three command points each, as usual. But we also have Typhus's. Uh, data sheet here. You can see his stat line. Uh, he's basically a Lord of Contagion. He has exactly the same stat line for his weapons. He has the Destroyer Hive, which is a Rain Six Pistol 2d6 weapon. Strength 4, AP minus 3, so that's going to be pretty deadly against Space Means. However, this little proviso here, it always hits on a 5 plus. So even though he's ballistic skill 2 plus, it always hits on a 5, but it also hits on a 5 plus in Overwatch. And this is regardless of any modifiers for the minus 1 to hit or anything. He also has a Mastercrafted Man Reaper, which is basically a best of both worlds of the Man Reaper and the Plague Reaper that Felthys and Gangrus help. So it gives him plus two strength and does three damage guaranteed. He also has Blight Grenade, which is pretty unusual for a character in Terminator armor. And as usual, he has Disgustingly Resilient, Death to the False Emperor, uh, Noble's Gift, that Lord of Contagions hub, the Teleport Strike, because he's in Cataphracty armor, and the Cataphracty armor, so he has a four plus invulnerable save and he has to half, he has to half his advance rolls. The other new thing here is he is the host of the Destroyer Hive. So which he makes friendly Poxwalker units within 7 inches, they gain plus 1 strength and plus 1 toughness. Uh, we've said before that Poxwalkers are, don't do very well against Space Marines, but this is the cure for that. And if you thought it was bad that he was a really good Lord of Contagion, he's also a Psyker. So he can, uh, he can have two Psychic Powers, as well as Smite, and he can attempt to deny one Psychic Power in the enemy Psychic phase. But with that, we'll get to see Tyvus in action, we'll head into the army overviews and then deployment. So here's our Space Marine army for this mission. We have the Captain in Gravis armor, the Primaris Librarian, three Aggressors, the two Inceptors, five Scouts, I've gone for Bolt Guns and Heavy Bolter, and five Reavers. And the Captain will be my Warlord and I'm going to give him the Champion of Humanity trait since I'm trying to kill a character, so that gives him plus one to hit and wound against enemy characters. For my Psychic Powers for the Librarian, I'm going to take uh, Might of Heroes and Psychic Fortress. And here's our Death Guard army for this mission. So we have the Man of the Hour, Typhus, leading 12 Poxwalkers, 7 Plague Marines, a Chaos Rhino, uh, well, the Tainted Cohort. And obviously Typhus will be my Warlord, and his Warlord trait will be Living Plague. 
In the Death Guard Codex, it specifies that if he's your warlord, he has to take that warlord trait. It doesn't say that in the magazine, but I would feel a bit wrong to take a different one because he's supposed to have that one, so we will take Living Plague. It's quite good anyway, so that's the one that gives that deals out mortal wounds at the beginning of fight phases. And then he's also a Psyker, and he gets two Psychic powers, he's going to have Miasma of Pestilence and Putrescent Vitality. So, the Death Guard deploy first. Yep, yeah, so I'll actually, I'll actually explain what I haven't done first. Uh, I could deploy Typhus over here in this corner and park the Rhino in front of him, and then you'd never get to him because you've got so far to go and you'd have to kill the Rhino and everything else that's in the way. So I haven't done that because that would be really boring. So what we have done is we've got the Rhino at the front here with the Plague Marines in it, uh, the Tainted Cohort here, they can't deploy by in their Teleportarium for this mission, and then we'll Poxwalkers here with Typhus behind them. And now I deploy, so I've deployed the aggressors at the top end of my deployment zone with the reavers sort of slightly behind and to the side. And then the captain and gravis armor and the librarian behind them. The scouts I've deployed with their concealed positions rules, so they're next to the ammo boxes. And I'm going to keep the interceptors in reserve for now. So the space marines get to go first. So it's on to space marines turn one. So first thing, first in moment phase, all of these units here are going to advance, so I'm going to roll, I'll just roll them all at once. I'll start with the aggressors, they get to go an extra two inches, and then the reavers, an extra four, the captain and gravis armor, an extra four, and the librarian, an extra two. So there you can see all of my units have finished their advances. The scouts are just, the four Bolganers are just going to move back a little bit, just so they're slightly further away from Typhus's uh, smite. And at the end of my turn, the two Inceptors will come down on top of this Thermic Plasma Relay, so they're in range of the Terminators. So in my Psychic Phase, the Librarian is going to try and manifest Psychic Fortress on the Inceptors, since they're slightly closer to the Death Guard. He needs a 5, gets it with a 6. Typhus isn't in range to deny that, so it goes off. So I just put the card down there to show that Psychic Fortress is on the Inceptors, and with that over it's on to the shooting phase. Starting with the Inceptors, they're going to put all their shots into the Tainted Cohort. So we'll have 12 shots hitting on 3s, 9 hits, wounding on 4s, 5 wounds, 5 3 plus armor saves. Yep. I've uh, failed one of them, and it's disgustingly resilient, which I pass. There we go. Just got the scouts left to shoot. The four with bolt guns are going to shoot at the Poxhawkers. While the heavy bolt man, I'm going to use the Hellfire shell stratagem. He's going to fire at the Tainty Cohort. So I'll do the bolt guns first. We've got four shots hitting on threes, re rolling ones. Three hits. Wounding on fours because the Poxhawkers are topless four because of Typhus's aura. There's one wound. Disgustingly resilient. No, so Poxhawker will die. Hellfire shells from the Heavy Bolter, so he makes one attack, hitting on three, rolling one. He hit, so he causes D3 mortal wounds. Three. Which I do get to ignore on fives. Oh, made two, so one mortal wound. <laughs> we'll put it on the sword man, because he's usually fairly ineffective. Yeah, so I used a command point to do that. And that's all of my shooting, so it's on to Death Guard, turn one. So here's my movement so far. The Plague Marines have got out of the Rhino, and then they've all moved up to around about here. And the Tainty Cohort have moved forward their four inches. Um, the Rhino is going to stay where it is for the moment, and then the Poxwalkers will advance. Extra four. So that brings the Poxwalkers out here, up to the front. And then Typhus is going to advance as well, because if he rolls well enough, you might be able to get to him in smite range or something. But of course, he only moves half when he advances. Uh, one, so it'll only be five inches. Four and a half, I guess. So that gets him to there, which is within smite range of the Inceptors. And then, in my movement phase, I'm going to spend a command point for Cloud of Flies. I'm going to play it on the Tainted Cohort, which means you can't shoot at them unless they're the closest unit. Death Guard down to two command points. So on to the Psychic phase. In the Psychic phase, we're going to start with a Miasma of Pestilence, and it's going to go on those Blade Marines. So this is Warp Charge value of six. Just about get it with a six, but you're not in range to deny. Yep, so it's Miasma of Pest Pestilence on the Plague Marines. And then we will go for a Smite, which will hit the Inceptors. If it goes off, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. five. So we're on to the shooting phase. We're going to start the shooting with the Plague Marines, they'll shoot everything at the Inceptors. So we've got four shots with Blight Launchers hitting on threes. They all hit. Wounding on threes. <laughs> uh, they were wounded. Uh, so it's four four plus armor saves because we have cover from the Thermic Plasma Regulator, which I failed all of them, so they will die. They will. So the Inceptors destroyed. Yep. Well, the rest of the Blade Marines shooting can't obviously wasted, but it doesn't matter because they've killed them. And then the Tainted Cohort are in rapid fire range of the Scouts, so we will shoot the Combi Bolters, eight shots hitting on threes, four hits, wounding on fours, only one. Oh. 
Three plus armor save for the scouts. I made that one. Yay! And then the rhino will shoot the scouts as well. So we've got two shots with the combi bolter. Uh, one hit, winning on four. Yep. Three plus armor save. No. So the scout dies. Take away this man at the front. And then we've got d6 shots on the helmet launcher. Just two, hitting on threes. One hit, wounds on a three. It did not. Uh, but that was the end of my turn, obviously, because I'm far too far away yep. to charge. So it's on to Space Marines turn two. So my movement, everyone's going to advance again because we're still miles away from the Death Guard. So I'll do last time. So I'll start with the aggressors. They get to move an extra five. The Reavers, an extra three. The Captain, an extra one. And the Librarian, an extra five. So then we finish our movement. The aggressors have moved up all the way up here. And Sarge is actually just in range of the Poxwalkers for his flamers. Reavers have come up next to them near the tank trap. The captain's moved up behind. The scout's going to stay with the eye. And the librarian has come down here. So he's just within smite range of the plane marines, but outside of Denar range for Typhus. And with that, it's on to the psychic phase. Uh, so first off, the librarian will try to manifest psychic fortress on the aggressors. So he needs a five. Gets it with a seven. Go on tonight. And then he'll try to smite the Plague Marines. Or it will hit the Plague Marines. Ooh, 12. Yeah, I will take it. Just I will take D3 mortal wounds there, unfortunately. So the Librarian takes a mortal wound, but I get D6 mortal wounds for the on the Plague Marines. Well, I'm definitely going to re-roll that. Mm. Rerolls a one into a three. Well, not bad. Uh, ignoring these on fives. No, that's three Plague Marines yeah. dead. Yeah, we'll take these three bolt guns. Obviously. And the librarian is down to four wounds. That's my psychic phase over, on to the shooting phase. So I'll start with the scouts, they're going to put all their shots into the plague marines, but they do have minus one to hit. So they're not within rapid fire range, so we've got three bolt gun shots hitting on fours, but we're rolling ones. You rolling that one. That was a one again, but. We rolled into one, but there's two hits. Wounded on fives, nothing. And heavy bolter, three shots. Hitting on fours, they will hit. Nope, my asthma did nothing. <laughs> Wounding on fours, two wounds. AP minus one, so four pluses, made both. And then the aggressor sergeant is in running range, he's going to shoot the pox walkers with his flamers. 2d6 automatic hits, eight. Wounding on fours, because the pox walkers are plus one toughness. Oh, that made a difference. But that, that was a five. Before. Yeah, but it's still two threes. But yes. Five wounds discussing resilient, uh, made two, so three box walkers go down. Take these ones away from the far side. And that'll be it for my turn, so no... Oh yes, so they do have to take a morale test, so they might fail on a six. Yeah. No. Yeah, so they're fine. And that's the end of Space Marines turn two, on to Death Guard turn two. So the first thing I'm going to do is advance these box walkers. An extra five inches. Well, here's my movement. Uh, the box walkers advanced, their, their advance took them over there. And then the Tainted Cohort have moved up their four inches. The Plague Marines have come in a bit. The Rhino has moved up as well, because it would be useful to have it a bit further forward. And Typhus has moved up slightly, but he's not going too far forward at this point. And uh, I'm going to spend a command point for Cloud of Flies. I'm going to put it on the Plague Marines this time. So I can't shoot at them until they're, unless they're the closest unit? No, nope. so then we'll be on to the Psychic Phase. Typhus will start with... Uh, we're going to cast Mousmer of Pestilence on the Terminators. Yep. So that needs a... well, that's an eight, so... No, I'm not going to try and deny, even though I am in range, so Miasma Pestilence goes off on the Terminators. Then I'm going to try and manifest Putrescent Vitality on the Boxwalkers. And that, needs a, that also has a warp charge value of six. That's a four, so that doesn't go off, yeah. and I'm not going to re-roll it. So with that, we'll be on to the shooting phase. Start with the Tainted Cohort, we're going to put the Plague Spewer into the taint, into the Aggressors, and the Combi Bolters are going to go into the Scouts. Okay. So we won't damage them. So we'll do the Plague Spewer first, D6 shots, all six. He's wounded on fours. Rerolling ones, no ones, so that's four wounds. Uh, four, four plus armor saves. Oh, made two of them, so only one aggressor dies. Take this guy who's facing the wrong way. And then we've got all the combi boulders at the scouts and threes. Uh, six hits. Wounded on fours. Ooh, five wounds. Five three plus armor saves for the scouts. Failed three. Mm. Well, yeah, we'll just leave the heavy boulder. You'll have to take a morale test there. Yeah, he gets to re-roll it though. Yep. So that's their shooting. Um, the Plague Marines will shoot... I guess we'll shoot the aggressors again. We'll start with the Blight Launchers. Four shots on threes. Ah, oh. makes up for their previous <laughs> shooting. It wounds on a three. No, nope, it didn't. Plasma Gun, I'm not going to supercharge. One hit. Wounds on a three. It did. Six plus armor save. Ooh, almost. So aggressor takes a wound. Get on the regular man. 
And then we've got one bolt gun left. He hit twice, he wins on fives. Oh wow, double six. Three plus armor save. Uh, made one, failed one. So the wounded aggressor goes down. The rhino. Now actually the rhino will try and get rid of the last scout because if he's alive he's got his hellfire shells. The combi bolter still isn't in rapid fire range and it hit once, it wins on a four. Yep. Three plus armor save, made it. The Havoc Launcher gets three shots, hitting on fours because it moved. That was a one, so two, two hits. hits. Wounding on threes, two wounds. Three plus armor saves, made both. Typhus's gun is not in range. In the charge phase, the Santa Cohort will charge the remaining aggressor. So he is in range for Overwatch, so 2d6 Overwatch shots. There's six hits. Wounding on fives, two wounds. Two plus armor saves, made both. And then their charge range, they need a seven. That is an eight. Yep, so they're in. So they finish their charge like that. Um, I'm not going to make any more charges. Go straight to fighting with them. We'll start with the Bubotic Axe. It's got two attacks hitting on threes. That's one hit. It wins on four re-rolling ones. That's a two. Then we've got the sword. Two attacks on threes. They both hit. We're on fives. Re-rolling ones. That's one wound. That's three. Six plus. Nope. Sarge takes a wound. And then Man with Fists. Hits, ooh, hits two, uh, hits twice. No, Death of Force Emperor didn't generate another one. Wounds on fives. Ooh, it's AP minus one because he's Aura of Rust. Four plus armor save. Mate. Mate. So Sarge gets to fight back. Three attacks hitting on fives because of Miles with Pestilence and uh, his Gauntlet. Got two hits. Hmm. Wounding on threes. One wound. Four plus invulnerable save. Mate. So yeah, that'll be the end of. Oh no, so there's a round test for the Scout. Side, so he's leadership 8. He rolled a 6, so that's a fail, so he gets to re-roll it. He rolled a 3, so he, that's, he'll succeed. And that's the end of Death Guard turn 2, on to Space Marines turn 3. So there we've finished my movement. The movers have moved up, as has the captain. Uh, Sergeant, the Great Sergeant's going to stay in melee. The Librarian has moved around to get closer to the Terminators than the Poxwalkers, and this scout's going to stay where he is. So it's on to the Psychic Phase. First off, the Librarian's going to try and manifest Might of Heroes on the Captain. He needs a 6. Doesn't get it with a... I won't re-roll that. And then he'll try to manifest Smite and it will hit the Terminators. He does get that with a 5. I will try and deny it with Typhus in range now. I've got a 7 so it doesn't go off. Yep. So, second phase over onto the shooting phase. I'll start with the Reavers. One of them will throw a frag grenade at the... No, we won't bother the frag grenade. We'll throw a shot grenade at the Poxwalkers and the other four will fire their pistols. So the shot grenade, D3 shots, three. Uh, hit it on threes, you're on ones. Yeah, you got a hit. And then four pistols hitting on threes, you're on ones. Two hits. Wounding on fours. Nothing. Uh, the captain will fire his bolt storm gauntlet at the Poxwalkers as well. Three shots hitting on twos, you're on ones. It will hit. Wounding on fours. Two wounds. And Disgustingly Resilient made one, so one Poxwalker will die. Take that one. Yeah, the Librarian will fire his bolt pistol at the Poxwalkers as well. One shot hitting on three rolling ones, hit, when you'll fall, nope. And Heavy Bolter Man will fire at the Poxwalkers as well, because he can't shoot the Plague Marines. So three shots hitting on threes, you're rolling ones, they will hit. Wounding on threes, two wounds. And uh, Disgusting Resilient made one, failed once, so another Poxwalker will die. And that'll be end of the shooting phase, on to the charge phase. So in the charge phase the Reavers will declare a charge on the Poxwalkers and the Terminators. So no overwatch, their charge distance is four. So the Reavers have finished their charge like that. Then the Captain will declare a charge on the Terminators. He gets to go seven. So he's moved in to contact with that Terminator, stopping piling into the Reavers. And then the Librarian will declare a charge on the Terminators as well. And he's not going to get in with a three. I'm going to start with the Reavers. They're going to pile in like this. So this guy will, Sarge will bring the Plague Marines into contact. 16 attacks hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. And re-rolling the ones. 10 hits. Wounding on fours. So they're still within seven inches of Typhus. Five wounds. Disgustingly resilient. So that's four dead. Uh, we'll take the ones over here, the furthest away from Typhus. And then the Reavers can consolidate. Captain will go next. He has five attacks, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, because I'm going to use the Bolt Storm Gauntlet rather than the sword. 
Uh, for fours, because I've still got my asthma on. Oh, fours, but re rolling ones. So that's three hits. Wounded on threes. Get that in the box. That's two wounds. Two, four plus invulnerable saves. Failed both. Uh, no, I won't re roll them. So first one does three damage. Uh, so that oh, it wouldn't have killed someone, but this guy is on a wound. So, he so the sword man goes down, and the second one does two damage. And that does kill another one. Yay. So it would be the man with the spewer. But that does mean that the... That's not deliberate, but it does mean yeah. he's not in melee anymore. Yeah, so Sarge is now unengaged. And then it would be your fight backs then. Yes. Uh, well, it doesn't, the order doesn't matter, so we will start with the Terminator. The captain, he's got two attacks on threes. Double six. Oh, that's two death to the false emperor. One of which another one hits. Wounding on fours, rolling ones, uh, rerolling ones. That's three wounds at 18 minus two. Four plus invulnerable save. And now I'll take that. So he's down to four wounds. Plague Marines will go. Yeah, because I might get a Pox Walker back if I damage, do some damage. We'll do the champion with his fist, power fist first on. Uh, that's two hits, but not Death of the Force Emperor. Wounding on twos. That's two wounds. Six plus armor saves. Made one, failed one. D3 damage. Three. So Reva dies. Take away this guy at the back. Um, and then three plague knives on threes. Uh, that's two hits. Wounding on fours. Two wounds. Three plus arm saves. Make both. And then we've got two pox walkers left. And the other reavers on fives. So that's one hit. Wounds on five. Four. Oh, four, yes, because they're plus one strength, but that's not two. So. so that's the end of Space Marines turn three. On to Death Guard. Turn three. At the start of the movement phase, I'm going to play the dead walk again on the pox walkers. So that means every infantry model within seven inches of them that dies turns into a pox walker, not just people they kill. Yeah, but it means you're out of command points. It does. And then the rhino has moved here, like this, just to block off a bit. And Typhus has moved up mm -hmm. like that, and everyone else will stay in melee. In the psychic phase, we'll cast. We'll do. We'll start with. Yeah, we'll start with smite. Two. So uh, that's a five. So I've just about got it. I will attempt to deny. So I need to roll a six or more to deny. No, I will re-roll one. Okay. Might as well use it now. No, it makes it worse. So smite does manifest. D3 mortal wounds on the Reavers. Three. So Reaver dies. Another one takes a wound. And you get a Poxwalker back. Yep, so we'll put our new Poxwalker down there. And then for our second power, we're going to try, try and cast Miasma of Pestilence. I'll put it on this Terminator again, see if I can keep him alive a bit longer on a six. That does go off. Yep. Uh, we've also just remembered that um, Typhus has the aura that the Lord of Contagion does. So on a four plus, one of these Reavers will take a mortal wound because they're within an inch of a Death Guard unit. No, it didn't, so it doesn't matter. Then in the shooting phase, the Rhino will shoot at the uh, Aggressor Sergeant because it's the only target he's got. So four shots with the Combi Bolt on threes. Three hits. Fives. So far, nope, nothing. And the Havoc Launcher. Gets four shots, hitting on fours, nothing. Mm. Then we're on to the charge phase. Typhus will charge the Reavers. Yep, no watch. No, and no, he's in. I'm not going to get too close, I'm just going to stay there. And uh, the Rhino is going to charge the Aggressor Sergeant. Yep. Who can shoot four times, I guess, because he hasn't moved. Yes, he didn't move, so, so he has to shoot twice. So 46 flame hits. Ooh. So <laughs> 21 flame hits. <laughs> so first batch of 11, wounded on five. There's one. And then a batch of ten wounding on fives. That's a bit better. That's better. That's another six, so that's seven wounds in total. Three plus armor saves. It takes three damage. Three. So it is down to seven. Then its charge is seven. It'll come right here and it can it can fight him because it's over the pipe, you have to be within two inches. Yep. At the start of the fight phase, Typhus's warlord trait aura goes off, and every unit within three inches of him takes a mortal wound. Uh, on a 4+. plus, So, unfortunately, I didn't think ahead and didn't move him within 3 inches of the captain. So, it'll just be the Reavers on a 4+. plus. No. Um, but he charged, so he'll pile in. He has 4 attacks, hitting on 2s. They all hit, and Death of the Vols Emperor for an, for an extra one. Yep. Wounding on 3s. Rerolling 1s. Only 3 wounds. 6 plus armor saves. All made 1. So, 2 of the Reavers die, leaving Sarge alive. So we've got two pox walkers back from the dead walk again. Um, then the rhino charged. It has three attacks hitting on sixes. Wow, it got a hit. It wounds on a three, because it's strength six, I think. Yeah, it did. Three plus armor save. Yep. And it's my pick, so we'll pick the Terminator before he gets smashed to pieces. So he's got two attacks on threes. That's one hit. Wounds on a four. Three rolling ones. Oh, it's a wound at minus three. Four plus invulnerable save, which I failed. Captain is down to three wounds. Oh yeah, I'll do Sarge, because he might die. For all of his attacks on the Poxhawkers, I guess. 
four attacks, hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. Three hits, wounding on fours, it's one. Oh yeah, you killed one of my general people I'm using contact with Sarge. The plague moves next, and I'm gonna have to pile in like this. So the power fist on the fours, two hits again, wound on twos, that's two wounds. Six plus, no. No, so Sarge dies. And another Poxwalker comes back, and we'll bring Poxwalker back around here, and then the Plague Marines will consolidate a bit, I guess. So Captain will go next. Five attacks hitting on fours because of Miasma Pestilence, rerolling ones. Four hits, wounding on threes, one wound. Four plus one will save, made it. So only of the aggressor side left to pick. So he's got three attacks hitting on f fours, yep, rerolling ones, one hit. Wounds on a three, yeah, wounded. Six plus armor, nope. D3 damage, three. No, oh, it's down four. Well, that's the end of Death Guard, turn three. On to Space Marines, turn four. So, yeah, that's my movement. The aggressor sergeant's gonna fall back from the Rhino. The librarian's gonna move up to get in charge range and the scout's gonna stay where he is. So it's on to the psychic phase. Oh, the captain's gonna stay in melee as well. The librarian will try to manifest smite it will hit the Terminator if it succeeds, which it did with an 8. I will try and deny that because it's quite important. I got it with a 9. And I'll try Might of Heroes, and I got a uh, Librarian takes three wounds, and at that point uh, I'm not even going to bother playing out the rest of the turn. I'm just going to concede now because I can't get to Tigers. Okay. So I'm just going to call it there. Uh, so that will be a Death Guard victory. We'll recap that for you now. So that was the mission for issue 54 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest, and that was the outcome I expected. What did you think? Uh, yeah, I don't really think it was likely to go any different to that, to be honest. Um, and that was even with me coming out to meet you in the middle of the, of the board. Yeah, I mean, I, I killed more models than I thought. <laughs> well, I don't think there's any point where it looked like I, could, I can pull off a win here. Uh, my last turn, there was a chance if the Librarian had smited the Terminator and then the Aggressor Sergeant had shoaled the Poxwalkers out of the way, I could have got into melee with Typhus. But obviously the Librarian whiffed. Oh no, Mike Fierce got denied and then he got perils. Yeah, and then what, what would have happened is that he would probably he would probably have taken well fifty percent chance of taking a mortal wound in my, beginning of yeah. my, of your fight phase because of Typhus's aura, and then another one because of Typhus's other aura at the start of my turn. Yeah, and then and then in the fight phase, there's another fifty percent chance of a mortal wound, and then Typhus says a wound on four attacks, hitting on twos. Yeah, right. like Typhus on full wounds, whereas the captain on one or two. Oh, yeah. uh, Even with champion humanity, yeah. I think it would have been worth it. And there were a couple of moments where I thought, oh, maybe you know, and but then there were other other moments like when you only did ended up doing one mortal wound to the Terminators with Hellfire shells. Yeah, and, and the Inceptors did nothing. No, I mean... It might have been better to bring them on a turn later, but then something else would have died anyway. So. But it probably just saved the scouts from yeah, being killed or something else would have died, dead. so it's not really... But ignoring the super mean option of just hiding Typhus in the yeah, corner. Yeah, I mean, that's like the guaranteed win. It would just take me so it would take me three or four turns just to get to you, yeah. and I'd never have enough time to fight through your entire army. No, a slightly more strategic choice might have been to send out people as I did, but keep Typhus right at the back. But I did send him forward mainly because I just wanted to show well, off. Yeah, I mean, otherwise he wouldn't do anything. Yeah, and and actually, I tell you what, buffing the Poxwalkers made a huge difference. Yeah. You rolled a lot of threes to wound them. Like there were still Poxwalkers left at the end because of that. But also the forces you have. Like, yeah, <laughs> considering I have to kill a turn. Terminator armoured character. Don't think I'd take Reavers, even no. though they're good against Poxwalkers. I mean, if they're so far away, I probably wouldn't take the Aggressors either. I probably wouldn't take the Scouts, because I just wouldn't take Scouts against Death Guard. Yeah, and, uh, well, yeah, it's just melee units have a long way to go across the board. Against also a uh, Lord of Contagion. He already has the one aura, and you gave him Living Plague, which gives him another aura, which is yeah. just going to kill melee units. And, and I could just put difficult to get rid of units. You've got to hack your way through them to get to Typhus, who then is hardly a pushover. And even then, I mean, you got the Rhino as well. Yeah, I'm not really sure why I had the Rhino. Yeah, it me. is a bit of an odd choice to give you, but, I mean, it is another ten-wound blob that I have to get through. Yeah. Also, the fact that it can charge. Yeah, I mean, you can charge one of my units, and even though they can fall back and shoot, they can't charge if they do that. Yeah. So you just tie up one of my units anyway. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a good question, actually. Like From the collection we have, what units would you have taken instead? Um, well, I probably would have taken Hellblasters. <laughs> I mean, I'd probably go for a shooty army rather than a melee-focused one. I'd probably have taken the Hellblasters, the Intercessors, the Dreadnought, and probably Kalsis. Kept the captain and the librarian maybe swapped out the interceptors out of the scouts the reavers and the aggressors aggressors probably are the mm. best option even though they are slow 
Well, they're good against Poxwalkers and Terminators yeah. as well. Or at least as, as good as your units mm. get against Terminators. And well, we did, we, unfortunately, we didn't get to see your world trait, but I don't think Storm of Fire would have done very yeah. much because you didn't have really the shooting. I don't think I really roll, rolled many sixes to wound with no. shooting anyway. We well, just didn't have enough dice rolling in shooting mm. generally. And obviously, as I said uh, in the army of you, I took Typhus's Warlord trait because it's the one he's supposed to have. Yeah, so, we, so yeah. I suppose we should talk about Typhus in general. Yeah. So you, one thing the magazine doesn't tell you about is special characters. They're basically exactly the same as normal characters. And the few differences, one is you can only have one of each in your army. There's only one Typhus, so obviously you can only have one of him. Uh, two is that if they are your Warlord, they come with a preset Warlord trait. So Typhus has Living Plague, which is the one you gave him. I don't really know why the magazine doesn't tell you this. And no. the third one is um, you can't give them relics, I think. Uh, we don't know about relics yet. But uh, otherwise, Typhus, he's a pretty good character. Uh, he's basically a, a Lord of Contagion with the best of both worlds weapon. So he has Felthis' his plus three strength and Gangrus' three guaranteed damage. And he buffs Poxwalkers, which are one of your worst units. He actually makes them quite good. He, this guy, Typhus, is basically the reason why you take Poxwalkers over cultists. And he's a Psyker, so you can give him Putrescent Vitality and Miasma Pestilence, which are two really good Psyker powers. So you can buff up Poxwalkers to Strength and Toughness 5. Yeah. Think about the Poxwalkers as being a kind of cheap unit that mm. doesn't do anything, but actually when they're buffed to Strength and Toughness 5, but if you have more of them as well, so they're hitting on 4s, yeah. you, know, you can actually get a, quite a terrifying amount of attacks. And you combine out. it with the Dead Walk again. Yeah. So you can actually go beyond the unit's starting size yeah. if you have enough walls. And he's got the Lord of Contagion aura. Yeah, already. As well as his Because he is a Lord trait. of Contagion. Yeah. And his Destroy High weapon we didn't get to see, but I mean, it's AP minus three, even though he only hits on fives. So it's yeah. going to be pretty good against And pistol 2d6 as well, so yeah. like a good roll number of hits, even though he's hitting on fives. It's pretty yeah. dangerous. And it hits on Overwatch in fives as well, so mm. charging him is slightly more dangerous. Slightly more dangerous. He's, he's a good model. He's a great centerpiece for a Death Guard army. Well, I, from my only, yeah. I might have actually just answered my own question here, but my question was going to be, I'm not quite sure why the magazine has given him to us. And the, I think the answer is because actually for collectors, he's great. Looking at the, like the collections as a whole, he's definitely the centerpiece of the Death Guard forces. Yeah, but from the point of view of what we're doing, playing all these games, it's a third Lord of Contagion yeah. and one who's even more dangerous. Like the Lords of Contagion, you are hard enough. Yeah, they're already quite anymore. good. I mean, he's a, I think he's twenty five pounds to buy him from the Games Virtual website. So getting him for eight quid's pretty good. That is pretty good. Is and uh, you only need one of him because you can only have one. Um, so I mean, uh, it's nice in that respect. So I don't think there's anything else to say about this mission. So if you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe. And leave any comments. Tell us how you got on if you've played these battles. What you think of the scenario. What do you think of Typhus. We've been the Tabletop Donkeys and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.